If you're putting together a syndication or fund, you may be worried or maybe you already have this situation where you have an investor who wants to get their money out before the end of the fund or the syndication itself. It could either be part of a redemption or they just have some sort of life event uh, and need to get out and want to get their money back. How do we deal with that? How, what does a syndication attorney think about it? Well, let's talk about that. When I have a client come to me and we start putting together their package of their operating agreement and subscription agreement and private place of a memorandum, one of the items we always discuss is whether or not there should be an included what we call redemption. So a mechanism for the an investor to be able to get their money back is just a normal part of a transaction in the fund. If that works in the context of their fund, typically it happens in a fund and not in a syndication, then we'll build that in. But many times it doesn't work within there. And so there is this general concern about what happens. Certainly it's a question that investors may ask. Now I should do an aside here and that aside is this. So as part of Regulation D, there is a prohibition on resale. So first, let's talk about what exactly that means. What the SEC is trying to prevent is it's trying to prevent investors being able to create a market themselves. So they don't want to make it so that I'm buying a part of your syndication in order to basically create a market and start selling these out as it appreciates in value. So that behavior is prohibited. But behavior of selling your own shares or your own units or whatever, uh, whatever denomination it is in your, is typical and it happens very frequently. Now, as I said, this is part of a redemption or it may be something that's something else. So if there is no redemption itself, Normally, we'll look at the operating agreement itself and determine whether or not there's a, what's called a right of first refusal. If there's a right of first refusal, what typically will happen is the investor will say, I found my friend Joe Smith. They would like to be able to uh, buy my units for uh, $1,000 a unit. Before Joe Smith can go ahead and buy those, before the manager could approve them, the manager needs to take those and then look at the language of the right of first refusal. So it might be that the company has the right of first refusal, or it might be that the managers have it, or it might be that all the investors have it, or it might be some combination of the three. If there is that right, it needs to follow the rules that are dictated in the operating agreement to give that right to whoever is identified uh, so that they can purchase the, them for that negotiated price that the investor who wants to get out will do. Now, if there isn't a right of first refusal, not to worry, the investor still has the right to sell. But most of the time, probably all of the time, the manager has the right to approve or disapprove whether or not the new person is able to come into the fund itself. Now, if they have that, then we there should be a, some discussion in order to do it. Now, it's definitely a best practice to for managers and sponsors to work with their investors when they want to sell their units, not only because they give uh, better service to that investor and prohibit any sort of complaints, any sort of complaints are much less likely in that situation, but also because your investors may want more shares. If you've been doing a good job, they probably do want more of the deal that you're working on. So, and that just makes you more valuable in their eyes as well. So if, they, if this happens, you should do a lot of coordination with that investor uh, to make sure that everything's happening in a manner, not only that's compliant with the operating agreement, but with really the best interest of all of the investors. When it happens, if it happens with some third party, it'll typically look like an agreement is written between those two people, and then you will, as manager, will basically sign off on it and say, I've approved this transaction. So I hope that helps. 
again, when you look at this, when this happens to you, and it happens in nearly every syndication at some point, uh, don't fret. There are solutions to it. There is solutions for your investor. They don't need to be freaking out in, tor- in terms of how it's going to happen. You can help them. And the best thing to do really is give your syndication attorney a call. If that's me, we're always happy to help.